Hi guys, please like, share and subscribe. And if you want full course for any actual subject, visit theactualguy.com or WhatsApp on this number. Thank you. Now let's talk about how to become an actuary. So in India, you have three popular options where you can write your exams from. The most popular two are Institute of Actuaries of India and Institute and Faculty of Actuaries United Kingdom. And then some students are now also writing exams from Society of Actuaries, uh, which is a United States based uh, institute. Uh, SOA is coming up in India. They are doing a lot of activities to attract students, right? But they are still a less popular choice in India and employers in India don't understand uh, the SOA accreditation really well. So SOA is a body with great international repute and the biggest actual body globally. But in India, IA and IFOA continue to be the more popular and safer options. Now, when I talk about the actual qualification, there are two levels that you are trying to get to. The first intermediate qualification that you have is that of an associate actuary. So what does it mean to be an associate actuary? If you are qualifying from IA, it means you pass the first 10 exams, which is uh, the core uh, principles and the core practices exams. We'll talk about exams in a lot of detail eventually. Uh, with IFOA, that means you pass the same 10 exams, but you also have two years of work experience. With SOA, uh, it's slightly more complicated. You need six exams, three exemptions based on your university modules or again if you can't get that take exams uh, four e-learning modules and one seminar right uh, so based on that you become an associate actuary and then the final level that you're trying to get to is the fellow actuary level which is in case of ii 13 exams and three years of work experience right so that's what being an associate and a fellow means uh, so now let's talk about what are the advantages and disadvantages of the various institutes. Uh, so in Institute of Actuaries of India, you have a set which is the entrance exam and you have to write 13 more exams in order to qualify as a fellow actuary. In case of Institute and Faculty of Actuaries United Kingdom, again, there are 13 exams that you need to write. There is no entrance here. In case of Society of Actuaries, which is the US based institute, uh, you have no entrance exam, but in order to qualify, they don't only have exams, they have exams plus e-learning modules and seminars, which you need to do in order to pass. So ha they have this very practical blended kind of uh, curriculum. They believe that uh, exams are not the best way to test uh, all of your skills. So they give you, uh, you know, this sort of flexible structure. Uh, to qualify as a fellow actuary. Now, in terms of cost, uh, the Society of Actuaries is the most costly. Uh, these are the, you know, fee all the way up till associateship and fellowship. So there are two levels of uh, qualification for, uh, you know, becoming an actuary. The first level is called as associateship. In case of uh, Institute of Actuaries of India and Institute and Faculty of Actuaries United Kingdom, that means passing 10 exams, right? Uh, in case of Society of Actuaries, uh, you have to pass a certain number of exams and do some e-learning modules in order to become as a, become a associate of the Society of Actuaries. Uh, you will notice that the cost of becoming an associate is significantly higher for Society of Actuaries. Uh, note that in the IAI and IFOA, cost, I have also included the annual membership fee that you will need to pay for a certain number of years. Uh, I have considered that uh, it would take you about four years to become an associate. So I have included four years membership fee as well, right? Uh, cost till fellowship is also the highest for society of actuaries, right? Uh, now, uh, in terms of the number of attempts, you would uh, notice that uh, Institute and Faculty of Actuaries just has two attempts every year. So you can take exams in April and September. And in these attempts, you can write as many exams as you want, right? Uh, in case of Institute of Actuaries of India, 
they are conducting four exams for the initial uh, exam cm cscb uh, the exams are conducted four times a year so they are uh, in february uh, then uh, they are conducted in uh, may then august and november right so there are four attempts and for later higher order exams there are just two attempts a year we'll talk about the exams in a uh, lot of detail in uh, one of the upcoming slides right uh, in case of uh, society of actuaries for the initial two exams you have six attempts and then for the later exams you have two attempts uh, every year right so you can take the exams multiple times no matter which institute you go to but i and soa offer you that flexibility that you have more number of attempts to uh, sort of take the exam every year right uh, in terms of average pass percentages they are all pretty close with the institute of actuaries of india being the lowest and society of actuaries having the highest uh, exam pass percentages right uh, so the advantages of writing from iai is that uh, iai is the most affordable one as i pointed out uh, they have mcq exams they have four attempts every year right so that gives you the advantage that you can just uh, become an actuary faster or have a flexibility in terms of when you want to write the exams uh, iai is mutually recognized by ifoa which means that even if you want to work outside india what you can do is you can become a fellow of iai iai's fellowship is generally well recognized by international employers but if you also want uh, the fellowship uh, of institute and faculty of actuaries uk after passing all of your exams from iai and becoming a fellow with 3 years of experience that is the requirement for becoming a fellow uh, you can become a fellow directly of the institute and faculty of actuaries united kingdom without having to pass any additional exams also for iai and ifoa you would find uh, really good uh, exam support in india and outside uh, so lot of coaching and training options are available uh, for these two for soa the coaching options are slightly on the costlier side and the material may not be as good right uh, for i and i f o a i also have uh, courses so you can uh, check them out i cover the material in a lot of detail and we'll talk about that towards the end of uh, this video uh, further an advantage of i a is that uh, people who are already qualified chartered accountants company secretaries uh, cmas uh graduates from iits iims and indian statistical institute get a significant number of exemptions from the uh, the institute of actuaries of india exams right so you should check out that as well if you fall into any of these categories and you are eligible for exemptions now uh, let's talk about ifoa so the advantages for ifoa is obviously there's a higher pass percentage it's a legacy institution and uh, it these exams are uh, you know globally recognized although over the past couple of years there has been a loss of reputation because ifoa had from home unproctored exams uh, where a lot of students cheated but largely the reputation historically has been good right uh, finally for soa uh, the advantages are that they have more practical exam structures they have higher pass percentages they are the biggest body globally uh, if you are interested in moving to us or working in uh, roles which cater to us uh, opportunities us uh, insurance business uh, soa may be a good uh, idea to go for and both ia and soa have uh, some of the initial exams as uh, multiple choice questions so that is also an advantage right